The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone, on this Friday. Starting your day off here at 5 a.m. Good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher on a finally Friday. And we begin with some breaking news from overnight. CHP says a person was walking in the road when they were hit and killed by a car. It happened on Edison Highway just after 11 last night, just west of Weed Patch Highway. We're still working to get more information and we'll bring you updates as we learn more. We continue to following disturbing developments out of Arvin. Video shows a 16 year old student crying while getting chunks of his hair cut off by other students at Arvin High School. That video has now gone viral. The video shows the bullied student sitting down while other students surround him and cut his hair. We are not airing the video because the boy is a juvenile and his mother asked us not to. Arvin officials are condemning the bullying incident, adding they have reached out to Arvin High's administration and the Kern High School District Police to offer their support. Family and friends are expected to rally together and protest the bullying like they did here at San Diego Park yesterday. A family member says the bullied student has disabilities and he agreed to get a haircut by these students because he thought they were his friends. The video has gained a lot of attention with many parents demanding the district take action to prevent this bullying from happening again. KHSD released a statement condemning the bullying, calling it unacceptable. Officials say they are investigating to discipline those involved. Your time now is 5.03 and we're learning more about the case against a Bakersfield man accused of going on a rampage at a fast food restaurant. Rodney Rusko is charged with civil rights violations, vandalism, resisting arrest and a drug charge. The incident happened last week at the Burger King on White Lane. Court documents state that Rusco began yelling racial slurs at the restaurant's Hispanic employees and repeatedly shouted white power. Employees said they saw Rusco holding a knife. When he started breaking items and jumped over the front counter, staff locked themselves in an office, according to the reports. Rusco's due back in court next week. This morning, county firefighters are looking for three people who may be responsible for the fire at the party city in Rosedale. Officials say these are the three people they're looking for. They are believed to have started the fire inside the store, causing tens of thousands of dollars of destroyed decorations and other merchandise. And here's a photo of the suspected vehicle as well. If you have any information, you can call 1-877-FIRE-TIP. This morning, nearly 100 local veterans left stranded in Washington are set to finally make their way back to Bakersfield. These 97 vets are part of Honor Flight Kern County. They spent two days traveling our nation's capital to see the war memorials and other monuments built in their honor. And they were supposed to fly back yesterday, but that flight was canceled. This morning, they're set to take off in just a few hours and head back home, and that's where you come in. Organizers are hoping for a big welcome home celebration around 1 p.m. at Meadows Field. 17 News is your local election headquarters, and Kern County voters are making decisions on contentious races and ballot propositions right now. But the most controversial part of this election may not be who or what we vote for, but simply how we cast our ballot. 17's political reporter Matt Gannon looks at the issue. Less than three weeks from the midterm election, one question emerging at Kern's Board of Supervisors meetings, our local debates, even conversations with voters at the fair. But do we need an ID to vote? Why in Kern County? Do you not have to show an ID when you come out to vote? A voter is not required to show us an ID in order to be able to vote. The only time that we do require an ID is the a person who is voting for the first time in a federal election, because that is federal election law. Kern County Registrar of Voters Elect, Amy Espinoza, who will take over for her boss, Mary Bedard, next year, explains California is one of 15 states that in most cases does not require a voter to show any form of identification when voting. There is a misconception that, you know, that it's, it's Mary Bedard's call as far as whether or not people have to show their IDs, and it's not. 
it is a state issue and again we just followed the law. That issue is one of the most contentious parts of elections. Republican analyst Kathy Abernathy explains some residents in Kern are concerned it could lead to confusion with names at the polls or even someone showing up to vote saying someone else's name and voting in their place. Why not do something that is that simple to make sure that particularly if you have a name like John Smith or Susie Jones that you don't have any kind of confusion. Why not ask for it? Democratic analyst Neil Sinapa believes voting should be as easy as possible for citizens. Arguing requiring voters to show an ID could disproportionately affect voters of lower economic status who may be less likely to need or use an ID in their everyday life. Adding obstacles and adding burdens to our citizens um, in order to allow them to vote. And I don't think that's right. I don't think it's something that, that we should be doing. 17's political reporter Maddie Gannon reporting, showing an ID would only affect those voting at a polling site. In the June primary, only about 15% voted in person versus about 85% who voted by mail. And a reminder that next Wednesday evening, October 26th, 20th Congressional District candidates Kevin McCarthy and Marisa Wood will face off right here in our 17 News studios. The outcome of this race could affect the partisan balance of power in the U.S. House of Representatives. Republicans need to gain a net of five seats to take control of the chamber. Of course, Kevin McCarthy is the House Minority Leader and has been in office since 2013. Marisa Wood's a junior high English teacher at the Fairfax School District. Their live debate is happening at 7 o'clock next Wednesday night right here on KGET. If you have a question you'd like us to ask the candidates, send us an email, 17news at KGET.com. Type question for the candidates in the subject line. Governor Newsom announced on Wednesday that rewards of $50,000 each are now on the table for anyone who provides information that leads to an arrest and conviction in four California murder cases. Those cases include the murder of a four-year-old Bakersfield girl who went missing more than 30 years ago. 17's Michaela Armstrong tells us how the family is reacting to the latest development in this case. This year marks 32 years since four-year-old Jessica Martinez vanished while playing outside her family's apartment. After missing for 11 days, her body was found 10 miles away in a field. To date, it is a cold case, which has left her family tormented with unanswered questions. It's been 32 years and I think it's time for Jessica to get some kind of justice and her family so that we can know what, what, what happened, who and why. Justice Mesa has been fighting for since she last saw her four-year-old daughter on that dark day in May of 1990. She's gone, so I'm her voice. So if I don't speak and if I don't come out and if I don't put pressure and keep her name out there, how are we going to solve her case? I don't want her to be forgotten. The only suspect police have shown strong interest in was Christopher Charles Lightsey, a sexual predator who lived in the same apartment complex, but he was never charged with Jessica's murder. Every single one of them. Now Governor Gavin Newsom is offering a $50,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction in Jessica Martinez's case. Bakersfield Police Detective Lance Oneski says the department offered a $10,000 reward in the past, but the new amount could change things. A, a new reward coming out uh, sparks hope. It sparks hope for her and for us and for the whole community that we'll be able to uh, solve this heinous crime. Something Mesa has been pushing for. I just felt like, yes, now we're back again because I feel like she's been forgotten. With hopes that the reward will bring their family the answers they have longed for for over 30 years. This $50,000 is a way to, even if it's just a little something, just to call in and, and leave a tip because we're talking about a 32 year old case where there is, there has been no justice for Jessica. She was only four years old. That was Michaela Armstrong reporting. On Monday, all Kern County libraries started distributing Narcan free to the public. There was such an overwhelming response that the Southwest branch on Ming Avenue is temporarily out of it. Narcan is an overdose reversal spray that temporarily stops the effects of fentanyl and other opioids. The free distribution is in response to a wave of people overdosing on drugs, especially fentanyl. 
The distribution is in collaboration with Kern Behavioral Health and Recovery Services. The Southwest branch of the library, uh, the supervisor there, says they've ordered additional supplies and those are being delivered next week. The other 21 branches still have Narcan available. Library staff who've been trained on how to use Narcan are offering free training to the public when they pick up their boxes. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.